Hello, Barb here from barbaderholt.ghostmyheart.com. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today we are going to be creating a card with this technique. I don't know what we're going to call it. It's kind of a layery, inky technique. This one I did with rainbow colors. Today we're going to do more subdued colors. I have reinkers. These are close to my heart reinkers that match our stamp pads. This is the glacier, lagoon, peacock, and bluebird. I am also going to be using one of our water brushes. So this has water in the barrel and a brush tip. We'll also need a little pair of scissors, a little glue, and if we get lucky we will throw on a little of this onyx pearl liquid pearls. This is really pretty stuff. It's what I used to do the body of the dragonfly and a few dots. I already stamped two dragonflies on a scrap piece of watercolor paper and you do want to use watercolor paper for this technique because it can handle all of the water going on here. I have some intense black ink and my dragonfly is mounted. We'll see what happens when I ink it this way. Sometimes I lay it down and ink on top of it, but I think this might work. We will find out. So I'm going to stamp this for placement. I did cut this panel to four by five and a quarter, and I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of the Bluebird cardstock to use underneath it for layering. Our watercolor paper is the Tim Holtz watercolor paper. It has some texture to it, so that's why I'm giving it some extra pressure. And I do have my little mat. It's a little foam pad that comes in all of our stamp sets. And that doesn't look too bad. Most of it will be hidden, so it, it isn't imperative that it be a perfect image. The more important images are these here. So while that dries, we do need to do a little trimming. One of these, I am going to just cut out the wings. And this is a fun image because it's made up of little flowers, so the edges are kind of, well, they're flower petals, so they're not perfect. So all I do is just wiggle the paper back and forth a little bit. I don't have to be perfect with my trimming and because these I am just cutting off the wings, I don't need to worry about the body on this one. And again, I'm using our little close to my heart micro tip nonstick scissors. They work really well for these types of techniques. butterflies and I'm I'm bending. I've got my thumb here on the where the body is and where the wing meets and I'm bending that up. I'm going to do that on both sides because I want to give this a little texture. And then we have these and I am wiggling them a little bit, just bending them, moving that paper a little bit to give it some texture. We can do that with the wings here too. You can wiggle them a little bit. And I'm going to use my liquid glue and put a little glue on the wings. And it's a little brown because my pin is a little rusty. So there's nothing wrong with that. No one will see it. 
and putting this down over the top of the wings that are already stamped on there and then I'm going to take this other set of wings. You don't have to do the extra set of wings, I just like how that extra texture looks. Of course if you want to skip this step, you certainly can. Here I am putting on the whole dragonfly right over the top lining it up so that those antenna line up. And a little bit of pressure there to hold it in place. That should be it for now for the glue. I think I will see if I have a piece of scratch paper here. I do. I'm going to use the glacier first and what I'm going to do is put a dot of the glacier onto a block. You can use any slick surface piece of packaging from some kind of um, um, you know, clear plastic packaging. Adding some water and I'm going to do a little bit of smooshing with my brush. I am going to do the same on both sides. Um, the more water you add, the lighter it looks. So if you really want it to be darker, you can certainly add more pigment. But for now, we're going to do that. I have a piece of paper towel. I'm wiping the black off so that I can go to Lagoon. And add some water. I'm squeezing the barrel to add some water. If it looks too dark, add a little more water. We'll see what happens. That doesn't look too bad. I'm kind of liking that. You want to clean off your brush, just squeeze some water out and rub it on a paper towel. And here I am going to wipe that lagoon off of there. Next I am going to go with the peacock. The darker the color, <clears throat> excuse me, the less I think you need of the of the the ink. Those darker pigments are quite vibrant. So here this is really dark. I'm going to add a little more water to it and that will lighten it up a little bit. That little tiny drop sure goes a long way. So you don't have to go crazy. Um, if you don't have reinkers, you can take your ink pad. You can take an ink pad, open it up, smush a little ink on there and do the same thing. So you don't have to have reinkers to do this technique. I'm pulling a little bit of the ink off of there. It looks a little dark to me. So that was the peacock. And again I'm just running some water through the through there to clean off my brush. And the last color I have is Bluebird. A little bit of Bluebird. This is a bit of a messy process, but it is a fun process. Okay. So then we want to do a little bit of the Bluebird. And you can get some along the outside on the edge there if you want. all over this. It's just a really fun messy technique. It's not going to look the same if you make several of these. None of them will look alike and that's the fun of it. Okay, I'm going to wipe off that black. See 
how that looks. Once it dries, it will be a little lighter. That's okay. Right now, I'm going to take a little of the oh, dropsy, dropsy, yikes, liquid pearls. I'm going to put some on the body of the butterfly. Just like that. Maybe a little bit on the antenna. Just following along. And then a couple of dots down here. And you'll have to give it at least a half hour to dry. So those dots will be nice and dry. Um, so we will come back and I will show you what it looks like to put the card together. I'll give you a little bit of an idea here. We still have to stamp our sentiment down there, but I want to give this a chance to dry. So that's what it's looking like so far. And I'll be back in a little while. Everything is all dry now. Look at that. It's kind of shiny and fun and pretty. Yes, you can touch it and it doesn't smear or anything. We can attach it to a panel. You don't have to do this. I did cut this down to four and a quarter by... Nope, I cut it down to four by five and a quarter. I think I mentioned that earlier. And this is five and a half by four and a quarter. is a little bit um, watercolor will make your paper a little warpy because it's got all that water in there. It's all dry and I will take a block, set it on there. I have one of our handy dandy card bases. Again, I stand it up and it helps me to get it lined up straight. Here's what the card looks like with a stamped greeting on there. I did wishing you the happiest of birthdays. How lovely. I hope you'll give this a try. Thank you so much for stopping by. Have a blessed crafty day and I'll see you next time.